Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, September the 20th, 2020. It is currently 929 a.m. Central Time. I'm here in the sanctuary of Victory Baptist Church. And in, what, 30 minutes, I'm supposed to be live on the air for the Sunday school hour. So I've got to, I've got to hurry up, all right? Uh, I know it's 30 minutes, so I probably shouldn't be doing a live broadcast right now because I'm not very good at doing short broadcasts, but I'm going to have to force myself to make this short so that I can turn around and get everything ready for Sunday school and the Sunday morning uh, worship hour. Let me ask you, have you ever, well, I know, I mean, maybe maybe you haven't. Okay, I think, I, I don't think I need to ask this question. I'm assuming that all everyone listening to me have obviously been inside a mall at some point. I know going to the mall is not what it used to be. Like when, as someone who grew up in the 1980s, going to the mall, is that's where we, we spent a good portion of our teenage years hanging out at the mall. My parents would drop me off at the mall like at Saturday morning, like at eight o'clock, and they would come pick me up at midnight. I'd be at the mall all day, okay? And I would buy a book, buy music, get some food, go to a movie, play some video games. Okay, you get it. You lived at the mall. I know those days are over, but if you've been to a mall, most likely you have walked by, probably a very good chance, a a Build-A-Bear workshop. Build-A-Bear workshop. And you go in and you can build a bear. You can build, in a sense, your own little stuffed animal. Here's the steps. First, you choose a furry friend, all right? And this is from the Build-A-Bear workshop website. All right. You could first you choose a friend. So now you can do all of this. I guess, I guess you can do that all of this online now. So like right here, I can choose a furry friend. I can, uh, I can get a pumpkin glow bear. I can get an online exclusive purple moon kitty. I can get a candy corn unicorn. I can get a midnight shimmer bat, which looks pretty cool. I could get an online exclusive pumpkin spice bear. I could get a birthday treat bear. I could get a, uh, a happy hugs teddy. You can, you, can, you can look at all of them if you want. So, so first you choose a furry friend. Then you choose clothes and shoes for your furry friend. Then you choose assess, uh, accessories, right? So you, get, you, so you choose the furry friend. You choose clothes and shoes. Uh, oh, you, you choose sounds and scents. I, 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 I skipped that step. You choose sounds and scents, and then you choose different ac- accessories, right? Now, Here's the thing. All of this is about you choosing. You choosing. You choose what? You choose the, the, the furry friend. You choose the clothes and shoes. You choose the sounds and scents. You choose the accessories. You do it all. It's all about what you want, what you choose. Or, or you choose it for, you know, if you're going to buy it as a gift for someone else, you choose what you think they want. But you're doing the choosing. You're in control of the whole process. From start to finish, you do the choosing. Build a bear. Well, in many ways, build a bear mentality has has crept into the church a long time ago. All right, and and sometimes we're very good at, at picking it out, right? Sometimes like, look, that's you, you have a build a bear Christianity. You choose the kind of Christianity you want. You choose what you're going to believe, what you don't want to believe, and. I, I, man, you're, you, you've got to build a bear Christianity. We're so good at seeing when other people do it. Sometimes we're not so good at looking in the mirror going, man, is my Christianity a build a bear Christianity? Well, I choose what I want. I choose this. I choose that. Do you, do you this morning, do you have a build a bear Christianity? Do, do, do you have a build a bear church, all right, where you've built your own form of Christianity with your own ideas, your own beliefs and do you, do you, do you in, a, in a sense, approach the Bible like a Build-A-Bear workshop that the Bible is just filled with all the things you can choose from and you choose out of the things you want and the things you don't like, you just discard it. And you're like, I don't want that. I, I'm building a bear Christianity and I don't like that part of the Bible. I, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I, I just forget that. I'm just going to skip that. Now, listen. I believe we have to take all of God's word. We have to take Christianity as it is. Now, we may not live up to what it calls us to do. We may fall short, but we, we can't just reject it and throw it out because we don't like it or because we fall short of it or because it goes against what something we want. Do you have a Build-A-Bear Christianity? Now, why am I mentioning this? Well, I heard something and I want you to hear it. Listen to it carefully. Here we go. Christianity is a faith given once for all to the saints. It's not something you make up. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. 
In a pair of tweets that recently made rounds on social media, a young progressive woman issued her doctrinal creed. I'm a Christian, and I believe proselytizing is violence. I'm a Christian, and I believe LGBTQ people are divine and should lead us. I'm a Christian, and I don't go to church. I'm a Christian, and I don't believe the Bible's the word of God. Now, one wonders why someone who's already rejected church, evangelism, Christian morality, and scripture would even still want to keep the title Christian. This tweeter, however, is merely a more extreme example of a very common approach to faith these days, including to Christianity. Now, to be clear, this kind of self-constructed Build-A-Bear Buffet type belief acquisition works fine for some other worldviews, like the westernized New Agey offsprings of Eastern pantheisms. Pan means all, theos means God, so literally the religions that believe that everything is God and God is everything. Christianity, however, is a revealed worldview. It has an objective definition. Christianity centers ultimate reality and therefore ultimate authority outside, not within, the created order, locates it in a divine personal being who has made himself known through what he has made, through Holy Scripture, and ultimately made known himself through Christ Jesus. Now, one might doubt that there is indeed a God who has revealed himself, or that God has revealed himself in these ways, and therefore reject Christianity. But because Christianity is a worldview that comes already carefully defined, it's just not open to mass scale revisions. Last month, Arizona Christian University released a study called the American Worldview Inventory. It's a project being led by George Barna. According to the report, nearly two thirds of Americans believe that having some kind of faith is more important than the specific faith that a person chooses. And almost 70% of those who gave that response identified themselves as Christians. The same survey also found that a slight majority of self-identified Christians think that a person can attain salvation by being good or doing good. A belief, of course, contrary to the New Testament and the claim by Paul that salvation comes by grace through faith and not by works. The results of another survey jointly sponsored by Lifeway Research and Ligonier Ministries found that over half of Americans and nearly a third of evangelicals agree with this statement. Jesus was a good teacher, but not God. And yet another survey conducted by the Barna Group with World Vision found that nearly half of young adults globally say that the church is not able to answer their questions or address their spiritual doubts. Now, the sample size of that last Barna study, over 15,000 respondents from 25 countries and nine languages, well, that suggests that theological literacy and worldview clarity are not just American church deficiencies. Christian identity is at risk on a global scale, including what the word Christian even means and whether or not Christian truth claims are distinct, knowable, and reliable. Confronting such widespread confusion will require from us at least two things. First, it will require following Ryan Anderson's example of bringing clarity to the debate over so-called same-sex marriage. Basically, sorry, marriage is a thing, and same-sex relationships just aren't marriage. We also must be willing to definitively say whenever necessary, sorry, Christianity is defined, and that's just not Christianity. Second, and even more importantly, we need to abandon this self-construction, build-a-bear, buffet approach to religion that's so pervasive in America, in our own hearts, and in our churches. A great place to start in clarifying the faith that was delivered once for all to the saints, as Jude says, is, of course, Holy Scripture itself. And for a trusted guide to this, check out what might be Chuck Colson's most important book, The Faith given once for all. Also, our outreach and church growth strategies must conform to what Scripture reveals. Too often, perhaps to make Jesus more palatable to non-believers, we elevate personal preference and give the impression that much of the faith is negotiable. That strategy, however, only inevitably ends with church, the Bible, morality, even Jesus himself becoming negotiable. And to close, let me say this. We should never worry whether what the author of Hebrews calls the first principles of God's word will be able to survive all the scrutiny, the doubt, and the disdain of the modern world. Christian truth will most certainly survive. It survived till now, and it will survive because, after all, 
It's true. For Breakpoint, I'm John Stone Street. Okay. I don't have a lot of time to go into great detail, so I'm going to try to make my points very clear and very precise and, and tried. Now I'm going to have to offer summaries. So that's that goes against my DNA because I'd like to expound, not just summarize, but I'm going to have to summarize some basic points. Number one, this is important. The, yes, we have, this is a rampant problem throughout all of Christianity and, and the culture that we all decide what we want. And we, we redefine Christianity. Re, we, we make the Bible say what we want. We choose what we want. We've got a major problem. We got theological illiteracy, biblical illiteracy. We've got a problem. But one of the things we definitely need to get back to, we need to get back to the creeds. We need a creedal foundation to build, to, to say, hey, this, I, I th- the, the creeds offer a kind of a curb that you don't go off the curb. It at least keeps you on the road. And the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, Athanasian Creed, these creeds are, these creedal statements are important. So I think we need to get back to those creeds as, hey, here's a, here's a, kind of the two cur- here, here are the curbs, and you can't go outside of this. If you go outside of this, you've left b- historical biblical Christianity. So I think we need to get back to the creeds. I think we need to get back to catechesis catechizing, question and answer, uh, and, and a very simple theological education to get people at least grounded. So we've got to increase our doctrinal, theological, historical uh, teaching to the people. We've got to get back to that. Obviously, we've got to get back to, uh, you know, to the Bible, definitely. But just those creedal statements is the church, they protected the church for a very long time. And, and I think we need to get back to, 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 to creed, catechesis, and scripture, definitely. But I want to make a very important point. And I know I may offend some people, but that's okay. It's always easy to look at, and, and, and they, they, they picked out tweets from a progressive woman, right? Someone who's liberal, progressive, on the left, and say, hey, that's not Christianity. I want to make sure we, we I'm going to be very bold here, right? I'm going to be very, very blunt here. Hey, the same thing happens on the other side. Because the other side wants to portray Jesus walking around, you know, carrying three guns as he as he shows you his NRA card, wearing a Make America Great hat while he's building a wall to keep immigrants out. They, 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 that's the other side wants to turn Jesus into a walking Republican who who thinks, you know, who looks like and sounds like Donald Trump. That's that's not Christianity either. OK, so just as the left hijacks Jesus and hijacks Christianity and redefines it and builds a bear, build a bear Christianity that reflects their progressive liberal ideology. There are those on the right who build a bear Christianity that reflects their conservative political Republican um, ideology as well. And both are crazy. It's like, here's, here's the Jesus walking around carrying three guns, wearing a red hat, building a wall, showing you his you know, National Rifle Association card. And it's like, well, wait a minute, come on. Can we, can we just stop that and just go to the scriptures and let the scriptures tell us who Jesus is? Let the scriptures tell us what Christianity is. Can we rely on historical the historical record of Christianity. Can we allow that? And and again, this, they, they want to talk about this build a bear mentality. Yes, it's rampant in the church. It's rampant that we can just define what we want. And we can talk about how, in many cases, the Protestant Reformation led to this kind of me, me, myself, and I. That obviously, the reformers would have never wanted that. They wanted that to be scripture alone, but it's become me and scripture alone. And when you leave me and scripture alone, then basically I begin to tell you what the Bible means to me and there becomes the problem. So that's a whole different issue. But I just want to make it very clear. This, a lot of this reflects the political and ideological hijacking of Christianity. We allow other things to influence our view of Christianity and define our Christianity, which is something we have to repent of. But the church... Um, I mean, there's a lot. I, I I did an entire episode about all the different things that you know that Christianity is under siege, uh, and there are a lot of different things attacking Christianity. You should go back and listen to that episode. That episode every day seems to be proven to be more more important and more needed than when I first recorded it. And 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 you know, and so I I hope people will go back and listen to that. A lot of these things I've been saying for a very long time, but yeah, Christianity is under siege. Um, and there are things that are happening from without, and there's things that are happening from within, because the things that are happening outside the walls, they come inside the church. And this very, like, just 
I get to decide what's true. Uh, relativism. I get to define what the Bible says. I get to. I, I get to tell you know. It's just all of these issues are, are are having a major impact. But I have to stop because I've got 15 minutes and I've got to be live on the air again and I got to get everything ready. So um, we'll be under the VBC podcast for Sunday school and the Sunday morning worship hour. But I wanted to at least uh, bring this to everyone's attention, give you plenty to think about, discuss. Give me your thoughts. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. And I'll state it this way. I'll end it this way. Repent of your build a bear Christianity approach. Repent of it. Christianity is not for you to define. Christianity is not for you to shape and mold in your own image. God is not there to be recreated in your image. Uh, The scriptures are not there to be molded and twisted to fit your own agenda, your own ideology, your own political leanings. No, you are to come to the scriptures and bow before them. They are to twist and manipulate and conform you to its to its view. You're not to conform to twist it and make it conform to you. And that is uh, something we nef- definitely need to r- approach and try to fix. All right, I'll stop right there. I'll be back here shortly for the uh, Sunday School Hour here at Victory Baptist Church. Thanks for listening. God bless. Mm-hmm.